the village of Magumwa, quiet behind its stick fortress. But inside... Quite a welcome. In every village like this, women were ready at a moment's notice to lead their children in singing. And what a joyous sound. There's no electricity. This small village still operates by the rhythm of the sun, and daylight is fading. As soon as the goats and cattle are fed and milked, a gate of sticks closes the compound as a protection against lions. Some of the calves will actually sleep in pens next to the family. No one cares more for their livestock than Maasai. Laiban is the Maasai name for medicine man. They can put a curse on enemies, but generally they perform the duties of leader, psychologist, advisor, and healer. A Laiban is an intermediary between man and the power of life. He's the spiritual part of the Maasai culture, and his artifacts hold the spirit. As long as their people believe in their mysterious power, they'll survive. This scene hasn't changed in centuries. It takes hard work to survive the dry season. Women do much of it. Firewood is needed for cooking and keeping warm. And the search is never ending. The young men tend the cattle. They still have a reputation as fierce warriors, but basically they're a pastoral people, believing God gave all the cattle in the world to them. And cattle mean everything, wealth, food, ceremony, status. The more cattle a man owns, the more wives he is likely to have. The Maasai village is called an Enkang. It's home to an extended family living in bomas built in a circle so the cattle can be protected at night. Every Maasai male becomes a Maran at age 16. He will travel away from his home for seven years to learn how to be an adult and how to live off the land and how to hunt buffalo. This forest is sacred to these Maasai. They use it like a shopping mall, a college, and on our way back to camp, even a candy store, braving African bees for a taste of honey. And yet what seems like an undisturbed vision of the past strikes at the heart of a modern political problem. The government wants to turn the sacred forest into another tourist area. And for many Maasai, that has a threatening ring to it. The Maasai feel they were cheated out of their land, first by the British during colonial rule, and then after independence. Like America's Indians, they were moved from rich grazing lands in the Rift Valley to drier country in southern reservations near Iraq during the last 80 years when it came to schools, hospitals and economic development the Maasai were easily ignored. And now for Moses Ole Capellian, Maasai survival depends on saving the sacred forest. God has given us the land. The land does not belong to me because I came up when the land was still here. It will be something to give to our children and people should, shouldn't abuse it or shouldn't take it away from us because it is like killing us right away. <laughs> 